Uh, hello, everybody. Um, this is DFS Chan um, here coming to you to talk about February 22nd, League of Legends uh, DFS Slate. Sorry for my uh, delayed video. Um, I was uh, helping my son to go night-night, um, but uh, he was having a hard time going to sleep. So, yeah, it is what it is. Real life stuff. So um, I apologize. But yeah, so um, I did take some time um, the last 20 to 30 minutes or so to kind of do the research so that this video is efficient um, for you guys. Yeah. If you like our videos, if you like my videos, please, please hit the like button below. Um, that would mean a lot. It keeps me going and keeps, uh, you know, me motivated to keep making these videos. Um, and obviously from Wednesday through Sunday, you know, I tend to make a lot of the videos because the pri pool, prize pools are bigger and we have a bigger size uh, slate um, in terms of like the number of games and number of variations that can happen from that. So I hope you uh, like these videos and find these useful. And please, please hit the like button if you if you think so. So we have two games in China and two games in Korea. Um, the first game in China is JDG versus FPX. It's a huge, huge favorite uh, one-sided game. As, at least that's how it's projected. Um, I do agree with those odds. Um, you'll see from my metrics that I researched why JDG should be that uh, fat, that big favorite. Um, you see JDG is starting the regular five, three, six, nine, Kanavi Knight, Ruler, and Missing. And then FPX is starting Shaolao Hu and then Hacker at jungle again. Um, and then Care in the mid lane, who's been playing pretty well, but, you know, LWX at Chocho, Chocho um, at support. So, yeah, I mean, I think FPX has been very up and down. Um, I'm not, like I said, you probably watched my videos before. And if you have so, if you have done so, you know, you know that I'm not a huge believer in Hacker and you'll see. Uh, the metrics support that, um, that he's not a good jungler. Um, but, you know, uh, it is what it is. Some people like hackers and I don't. So, um, and I think he, especially today, he's going to struggle against Kanafi. So one of the best junglers in the LPL. And then LNG versus BLG is the second matchup of the Chinese slate. Um, Zika, Tarzan, Scout, LP, and Hang are the starters for LNG. Um, and then Ben, June, Yagao, Elk, and On um, are the starters for BLG. And yeah, I mean, these both of these rosters are stacked. Um, I'd say like on its on 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 its paper, like BLG actually has a better roster, in my opinion. It's just that they just have not played well together. And I feel like they just haven't hit their ceiling quite yet. Um, they have looked up and down quite a bit throughout the season. Um, when they look pretty good, they look pretty good. But when they look bad, they look really, really bad. And I think it it's it's mostly because of the top half of the map synergy, especially especially a gal, um, just not meshing well with June and Ben, unfortunately. Um, but that can turn around obviously at some point in the season. Um, but LNG actually, on the other hand, has been playing pretty well with Tarzan and Scout. Um, has been the 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 deadly combo between jungle and uh, mid synergy there scout has been probably the best uh, mid laner in my opinion uh, in the LPL so far um, and that's really hard to do because there are so many terrific mid mid laners in the LPL um, including like rookie and knight and you know that but scout actually has been probably the best one in my opinion even over those two now the most surprising uh, player that has been outperforming his expectations is LP. And then with the support of Hang in the bottom lane. Now, I'm a little concerned that LP and Hang may not hang <laughs> around, um, hang well against uh, BLG's bottom lane and Elk and on. But we'll kind of talk about that when we look at the metrics. But Zika and Ben is another matchup that, I, that I'm a little worried about as Ben can pop off at any time as you guys as you guys probably know already about Ben, but, you know, I just feel like Tarzan and Scout have been very, very solid, and it's really hard to beat. And as long as Yagao does not, his form doesn't come back up, I think LNG will always have that advantage there. And you guys know how I feel about the importance of the jungler position, so that's that's probably one position I'll uh, most carefully look at, look at the metrics for. 
So yeah, let's look at the metrics for those two matchups first. Um, you see, I, I talked about I talked about JDG. Um, JDG, yeah, I mean it's driven by Kanavi at jungle. He's been one of the best junglers again uh, this split, and then they brought on Ruler at eighty carry, who's been really really good and getting better and better with the team. I think communication wise, you know, he's not fluent in uh, Chinese, but he he is getting better. Um, I think, and Kanavi is helping with that translation part since he speaks both Korean and Chinese. But um, so I'm happy that Ruler is getting along, and but that's also very scary uh, for other teams and their opponents, you know, as as the season goes on. So JD JDG should be favored by this much, in my opinion. Um, I mean, looking at the jungle control percentage difference, JDG is a huge, huge advantage there at plus seven percent. Then lane control percentage at 1.6%, and then gold spent percentage difference at 17.7%. That might be the highest one that we've seen so far. Um, it's actually <laughs> rivaled by another matchup on the slate today in Korea, but we'll talk about that later. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's fun. <laughs> Looking at the metrics, there is no reason why JDG should lose the series against FPX, right? Um, and that, that's what I said. I mean, JDG should win two to zero unless they want to experiment with different champions or comps like T1 did the other day. I mean, that can happen on a game like this where I think we're approaching the end of the first half of the spring split. So teams tend to do this when, you know, it's kind of like, you know, like they're trying to make a push through I'm basically like a half time at half point of the split you know, where they, you know, tend to make these types of experiments and try out different champions against an opponent that, you know, is inferior. But I just I just don't see JDG losing. And JDG really needs this series, actually, to stay on top um, of the LPL, top, you know, third of the LPL that, that, that goes to the playoffs. So I really do think um, JDG will win 2-0. to zero. Um, but I guess the most important question for DFS is now, like, is it going to be so lopsided that, you know, we're not going to have good kill upside for JDG? If Do we want to make them primary stack? I mean, long stack or short stack? I mean, uh, you see that CKPM is set at 0.82 and then kills over under is set at 23, which is not terrific, but pretty good still, like compared to other games that we have, except for one game. Um, so I do think it's pretty good. I mean, I think you kind of have to have like a mixture of JDG longer stack and shorter stack. I think it's a good, good thing to have both, uh, types of stacks for using JDG today. Um, JDG can pop off and, and there's not that big of a gap between JDG's CKPM and then FPX's CKPM. So it should be around 0 0.82 or 0.80 ish. So it really depends on how that would go. But I think, you know, JDG can always pop off, right? Like JDG um, is sometimes known for producing high kill games. Um, last year, especially JDG, I think, had the top three highest kill upside in the LPL, the whole split or the whole season, rather. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think JDG could be the highest scoring game, uh, highest scoring uh, team stack to use but um there's a good chance i mean they might just win like 15 to 5 or something like that so not not too high not as high as maybe the teams that we're just about, about to talk about in the next matchup lng versus blg i just talked about um briefly um you know i share my eye test uh analysis but now now i will share the metrics that i found um that favor lng and that's why I think LNG should win this matchup uh, against BLG. Um, total kills over under, first of all, is set at 25.5, which is which is quite higher compared to JDG FPX. Um, so this is the highest kill upside matchup, um, just, you know, looking at the metrics and combined kills per minute, although, you know, it's about the same as JDG FPX matchup. So, you know, I think LNG, you know, if they do win, I think they will probably score the highest in terms of kill upside. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Um, but like I said, I see all the key metrics favoring LNG, um, as you can see on the screen. 
Um, so I have LNG winning two to one. Um, as mentioned, Yagao actually has been struggling. I think he's been, uh, you know, he came over from JDG to join BLG, um, hoping for big things uh, to happen for BLG. And it could, it still could. I mean, it's early in the split, early in the season. I mean, they could still pop off and go to the worlds and make some noise. And but at the but at, at the same time, right now, like if you ask me right now, who's better, who's in better form between Scout and Yagao that are going as going against each other in the mid lane, it's hundred percent Scout. Like I said, Scout has been really lights out. I think Scout is going to dominate um, this game. That's my feeling, gut feeling. He may score the highest, um, even on the LNG team. Maybe LP could. Obviously, traditionally, LP should score the highest, the AD carry. But Scout has shown that he can pop off and he can score the highest. Um, he has that upside uh, by racking up kills. Um, and kill share is really high for Scout. So I think that's going to be the main difference. And as mentioned, the jungle control percentage and the earn gold gold uh earn gold per minute difference between the two junglers um in the game uh favor Tarzan albeit slightly slightly um I, I do think though uh Tarzan's team having the plus four percent jungle control percentage is a big difference uh in making uh match predictions like this. So I'm gonna have to go with LNG. But I will have exposure to both teams um, because I'm not going to have exposure to FPX in that earlier matchup that I just talked about. Uh, but I do think, I mean, yeah, I can definitely see BLG pulling off an upset if they had to hit their ceilings, like I said. I mean, as long as June and then, like I said, Yagao needs to, his form needs to come back up a little bit. But like I said, the bottom line, yeah, I mean, Elk and On could definitely beat LB, LP and Hang. Elk is a better AD carry, in my opinion, than LP is. Um, so that can definitely happen. But I just, I, like I said, I'm more of a data-driven guy and looking at the key metrics, LNG should win this matchup. In the LCK, um, we have the projected starters on my tweet here on the screen. Um, Nongshim Red Force has been one of the worst teams along with DRX in the LCK. Um, Gen G has been one of the best teams in the LCK, um, even though they lost to T1 the other day. Um, they should have won that series, in my opinion. Um, but Peanut, the jungler for Gen G, has been lights out. This whole split has been probably the best jungler, in my opinion, in the LCK, even over Dom uh Canyon, we'll talk about later, and then even over T1's owner, in my opinion. Like literally, Peanut has been the light, the best jungler in my opinion, and the metrics support that as well. Um, you see, like jungle control percentage. That, I mean, they have a ten percent big difference for in favor of Gen G, along with the fourteen point six percent GSPD. I mean, and they have a better early game and mid uh, mid to late game ratings as well, uh, compared to Nongshim Red Forces. So yeah, all all metrics, all literally every single metrics favor uh Gen G. So I have Genji winning two to zero, uh, unless Genji wants to experiment. I mean, they could drop a game or so, but I just don't see them losing the series. So I'm not gonna have any any exposure to Nongshim Red Force tonight. And so yeah, I mean that's already two teams, FPX and Nongshim, uh, Red Force that I'm that I'm not gonna have any exposure to. And and unfortunately, the odds, the underdog odds, are so big that maybe people, you know, will probably be on the same page as mine where. They're not going to carry much ownership. So, I mean, just from the game theory standpoint, yeah, I mean, you could play them. But, you know, if if I were, if somebody asked me to play, like, who was the better underdog to play, like a long shot underdog to play? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely going to be FPX. I mean, as I think Nongshim Red Force, I don't think they're going to score well, even in an underdog uh, victory. Um, just given the high kill upside in this matchup between JDG and FPX, I think it's a better underdog to play FPX compared to Nongshim Red Force. But like I said, at the end of the day, I don't think I'm going to have any of those uh, underdogs um, in those two matchups, the heavy underdogs um, in my lineup today. And then the last one in the LCK is very interesting. Um, I think it really comes down to if you are like trying to use like one-offs, or if you're using either of these two teams in the team slot, um, I think that's probably where the most value lies with these two teams. 
As you can see, the total kills over under is set at 19.5. Under 20 kills total is very, very low. And the metrics support that as well because the CKPM that I looked up on average between the, these two teams is set at 0.59, where KT plays a little bit faster than Damwon D plus Kia, but still like 0.59 under 0 0.60 basically is so, so slow. Uh, much slower compared to the other three games on the slate. So, yeah, I I don't think I'm going to have any, like, players exposure, maybe one-offs in the top or support lane. It could happen. But at the end of the day, I'm just not really interested. And, I mean, in terms of just make, making match prediction to use any of these two teams in the team slot, yeah, I mean, I, I just looked at the jungle control percentage and lane control percentage and the gold spend percentage uh, difference. They're all very even. Like it is literally so close. Um, you see, Damon Kia has a 1.2% advantage in jungle, but KT has a better laning matchup. And then, I mean, you see better early game rating for Damon Kia, but better mid to late game for KT. So they're the better team fighting team for KT. But I, I mean, like I said, so yeah, I mean, it's like back and forth, tit for tat. Um, and that one, Kia has been in worse form, um, to be honest with you, compared to KT's. KT has been in better form than that one, Kia's, uh, in other words. But I don't know if I can go against Canyon. Um, I do think I do. I did see that Canyon, uh, has not had the best or one of the good you know, his jungle, jungling performances this year. And I think that is really due to like new players joining the team with Kana in the top lane and Deft at 80 carry. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's, that's really the reason for struggle. I think Canyon and Showmaker, when you see them play together, I think that they definitely have it together, but when they have a big team fight and stuff like that, it's just doesn't really look very good where Canyon, uh, tries to make a play, but his teammates are not there to support him. Um, so they just kind of lose those team fights and lose objectives and kind of get snowballed from there. So which could happen here, but I don't think that will, that could happen against KT though. Like KT has been in better form, but it's more through like just like uh steady team fights. Um, I just don't think KT is the type of team uh, that can do that against that one Kia in an effective way. I know that one Kia is technically an underdog here, but I'm going to have to go with D plus Kia uh, to win this matchup. And I think I'm going to use them probably to differentiate my lineup. So I think I'm going to go DK wins two to one. KT is not the type of team that can take advantage of that one Kia's lackluster team fighting chemistry. Uh, Mid game with Deft Kana struggling to back up Kenyon's playmaking ability around objectives. I do think, however, DK is getting better at that with Deft being more, no, what's Kellen? Kellen being more proactive with Canyon around the map and Showmaker's form has been pretty good, which I think will be a huge difference maker against BDD. So, yeah. So I think I'm going to go with Damon uh, D plus Kia um, to win. But like I said, I, like I said, not good kill offside, or I'm going to say, Bad kill upside in this matchup, so just use a player from this matchup as one off in MEE GPP or use one of uh, use either team in the team slot to differentiate your lineups. So, yeah, that's where it is. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Um, that's all I got. Um, if you like the video, please, please hit the like button below. It it means so much to me and and True DFS and go check go check out True DFS for other contents. Otherwise, yeah, good luck out there and let me know if you have any questions. Bye bye. Have a good one.